everybody. I'm almost done with the van build. Now there's a few things I still need to wrap up. Uh, but the video you're about to watch is actually me trying to go car camping back in April uh, when I lived in Colorado. Uh, and I wanted to do that so that I knew if I can actually live out of a vehicle and handle it. So what you're about to watch is that. I hope you all enjoy. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to subscribe to follow along with this whole van build thing. I'm really unprepared for this. I'm just gonna go car camping for a couple days. It's gotta be like the coolest place to skydive ever. All right, I got easily distracted by that, but we're back on the road. Time to go car camping. 11,000 feet, made it. About to hopefully just descend now into uh, Gunnison, Colorado and then Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. I feel like this is the national park I'm going to, but like it's not in the national park. This is just the beginning of it. Pretty cool though. Shout out to my car for being a champ going on this road trip. We made it. Okay, so the place I thought I was gonna camp is closed for literally four more days. Uh, so I'm just kinda like looking up what I should do now. I'm understanding now how hard this is. On fat B. All right, I found a spot. I'm hoping it's it's a good one. It looks like a good one. There's no one around. Um, should work. It did get hazy really quick. If I smell smoke, I'll just die here. Car camping. Uh, the legend of Kirby Wolf. He tried, and he died. <laughs> I guess my plan was to just not clean out the back of my car at all because uh, I still got a football for all the, you know, football I play, tennis. Uh, I've also got this, like, protector thing for, like, office chairs in here that I've just never gotten rid of. Air freshener back there, too. My plan is to essentially take the seat down uh -huh, and then to reach all the way over here and take this seat down and then sleep into the trunk. I think it should work. Uh, we're gonna move this backpack up here. I've got a suitcase back here that just has clothes and stuff in it. I figured that's not gonna get in the way. That was probably a smart move to bring clean clothes. Uh, I bought uh, these uh, flat uh, twin black sheets for the bed. Um, I bought two of them, and my plan is just to drape them over the, uh, <laughs> over the back seats so that there is, a uh, there's a little privacy. That's the word. Privacy. Oh my gosh. The more I say this out loud, the more I'm like, this is the dumbest idea <laughs> to take this big old sheet and just kind of drape it over the front seats to the back seats. Is it going to work? You tell me. This is chaos. This isn't even a fitted sheet and it's chaos. I was thinking maybe like I could put it in like these things. I think that could work. I think that could really work. I wanna be sleeping basically in a, a bed sheet fort in my car. Okay, I've got a foolproof system here. I've got these little clippy things. I don't even know what they're for. Maybe the seat belt, I don't even know. Uh, but then I just clip the, the cloth into there I think I'm just gonna sit up on the back of my car for like an hour and watch the sunset and uh, that's the plan no phones just people living in the moment <laughs> alright 
I'm in my car, tucked in for the night. I got a nice pillow. That was a good call. You know, it's not the comfiest. Who would have thunk, right? But still okay. All right, I'm going to try to sleep. I'll let you know how it is in the morning. It's currently 5 a.m. It's so bright. Can't say that was the most comfy thing ever, but we made it work. I don't know what time the sun rises here, but I'm gonna get up and, and get at them. So now I gotta get, I'll figure out how to get clothes on. Get a hat on, to tell what's what. Deodorant, you know. All right, we got changed. I probably could have done it all in the car, but I decided to go out back to get the clothes. Um, oh, thank God. Got chapstick. That's important. I uh, didn't even know I brought this. So people don't know that I slept in my car, hopefully. Wait, kind of a waste of water, but... Okay. I feel like this might be the best I've ever brushed my teeth in my life. Feels like the most, like, uh, rewarding, maybe. Um, easy. All set. Pretty much took me, like, seven minutes, eight minutes to get ready, I guess. I mean, I had to wake up. It took me, like, 30 minutes to really get up. Um, I woke up at, like, 4.30 in the morning. I, I have three key takeaways so far. I still have two more nights, but I have three key takeaways. One, I'm buying another pillow because there's like a three inch, probably not three, I'm probably exaggerating, but there's like a gap in like a little ledge, a lip, um, that makes it a little bit more uncomfortable to sleep than it should. The second takeaway was the temperature, because when I went to bed it was like 80 degrees, and that's like a little bit more uncomfortable to sleep in than 50 in my opinion, but I like, had to take off layers, like I had that sweatshirt on yesterday, had to take that off to sleep. And then in the middle of the night, it dropped to like 50 degrees. So then I've got to like put the blanket on and I've got to, I woke up like in the middle of the night once and that was to adjust to the temperature basically. What was the third takeaway? The third takeaway, I had it, I had it, I had it, I had it, I had it. Oh. And the third takeaway was that I was like super hyper aware of every little sound outside. Granted, there were only like two cars that drove by the whole night. But like every time a car drove by, I was like, am I going to get kicked out? Am I going to, is someone going to pull up and shoot me in the face? Uh, didn't happen, luckily. Um, but you know, it's like, I don't know. At one point I thought, you know, what happens if a tarantula somehow gets in the car? And then I got to fight off a tarantula at like one in the morning in the middle of nowhere <laughs> so that's where my mind goes um so <laughs> i'd call it a success no tarantulas look at this thing all right just made it to utah really cool drive really cool sunrise now we're gonna go around and just kind of look at cool rocks that's the plan <laughs> I do it right I can get down the hill it's just really not set up for a Ford Fusion I'd call that a no-go uh, for my car uh, going this way um, you know maybe if I you know angle it right she might make it through uh, granted I don't even know if there's a good spot down there look at all those rocks All right, Utah, we did it. We earned our spot by driving down here in the little Ford Fusion. Keep in mind, I'm driving like a little car. This wouldn't be that hard any other car. Can handle anything. I believe it to be true. Step over, I don't have some massive upgrade to my camping setup. I got a chair. Did not have that yesterday, not at all. Takes one of these chairs 
He's got, and you know, you know what I mean? Oh shit. Bang. Whoa. <laughs> we have a chair. Is it comfy? It was $8 from Walmart. Draw your own conclusions. <laughs> I'd probably give Candylands about an eight out of 10. Also remember earlier when I said I was hyper aware when I was trying to sleep of cars going by. I'm testing that theory out by sleeping right next to the highway. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> One of the things I noticed today was that it's very difficult to find a place and like make sure that you have it set up and like secured and that you have it. This causes like a little bit of stress, but I'm like constantly thinking like, okay, where's my next spot gonna be? As opposed to just like enjoying the moment. So like at the national parks, it was like, okay, I know I need to be out of there by four, but like, I'm still stressing about it, you know, even at like two in the, two in the afternoon. All right, night number two, I'll let you know how it goes. I've had like the perfect two days to do this car camping adventure. Uh, like the weather's been great, no rain. Like there's hardly ever been bugs until like right now. So I'm kind of just camping inside. Uh, <laughs> I'm hiding inside. So that was the end of night two. Uh, not gonna lie, dropped down to like 40 degrees. Not prepared, not prepared for that at all. You're sleeping in the trunk, like that is uncomfortable and it's cold. And those are the things that like, when you have like a good night, like last night, you just forget about, even exist. And then they come back and you're like, oh yeah, that's right. But we're now waking up in the middle of like two national parks, basically in between two national parks and it's morning and there's hardly anybody awake and out here. My plan today is to go to Mesa Verde National Park, I believe that's what it's called. That'll be my last national park for Colorado, which I'm really stoked on. And then that'll wrap up the trip pretty much. It is the last park on the trip. It's only slightly better than this thing now. Slightly. So I'm at my second option for campsites. The first one was like a dirt road scaling up a mountain and it was also packed full. This one's pretty much full. I took what may be a spot, may be not a spot. Um, and I took advantage of it because uh, that's what we do here. I'll probably just wrap it up with a couple of shots of this campground and call it a trip. 